welcome back. The Monday through Friday grind is the reality for most workers here in the U.S. and really around the world. But is it time to think about a four day work week? Henry Ford figured out he could get more productivity from his line workers if he changed the work week from six days to five. What about five days to four? A new bill just introduced in Washington by a California congressman wants to reduce the standard work week from 40 hours a week to 32. But is it possible? A worldwide experiment is already underway to challenge the future of work. It's called Four Day Week Global. It started back in June with more than 70 British companies impacting 3,300 employees. And here are the preliminary numbers. 88% said the four day work week works well. In terms of productivity, 46% of the companies have maintained the same level. 34% said productivity has improved slightly. And 15% it has improved significantly. Employers have also seen an increase in wellness for their employees, that elusive, healthier work-life balance. Now, this is data from the UK, because here in the US, some stats show we work 200 more hours a year than workers in other developed countries. So that is something to take into consideration. Is this possible to do, or will it only happen at smaller businesses? And how do you plow through the philosophy of, if you work a shorter week, you're not just working hard enough? Joining me now to talk about that is Priscilla Archangel. She is an expert in human resources and is an organization's development consultant. Priscilla, it's good to have you here. Thank you so much. And also with us is Jamie Ebaugh. He's the executive director of Southwest Counseling Solutions in Detroit. And he's actually piloting a four-day work week with the staff on his team right now, Jamie. This is going to be very interesting to talk about some of the great things about it and maybe some of the pitfalls as yeah. well. But let's, you know, step back. And Priscilla, when we talk about this, I think everybody's got an opinion about whether we should be moving this way. And it feels like we really accelerated coming out of COVID in working different ways and changing the future of work. Why is this maybe a difficult, more difficult concept to get around? Well, that's an excellent question. And I think the big question around it is about productivity, mm -hmm. because if we need to measure your productivity, that's the way we get the benefit. It's the 100% pay, 80% of the hours, but 100% productivity. And we need to find better ways of measuring it. So when you sit back and you say, all right, this is a program that we are going to pilot, Jamie, mm -hmm. how did you guys set it up? So we researched a lot of what's going on in Europe with that 180-100 model. And we looked at how that would apply to us. And because we don't our staff don't work a 40 hour week, they work a 37 and a half, so it's really 185 and 100. Mm -hmm. um, but we broke that down and we've piloted it with staff that we currently already track productivity for years. Um, and how many staff members? So we have 15 staff members that we're piloting it with. Um, and they're from a variety of programs because we wanted to see how it works with different programs. Um, some programs it may not work with. We're, we're trying to measure that out. So when we look at, you say, 15 <clears throat> staff members, and Priscilla, this is the thing. I mean, can you put it to scale? Can you make this in, in a larger <clears throat> scale effort? Or are we destined to start to see maybe change just at smaller businesses right now? Because that's how you can really play with the time and the numbers and, and the measurement of it. I think in order to understand it better, we do have to start small. And so I commend you for starting out with a pilot. But figure out how it works, because it's all about culture change and changing even the way people kind of get their jobs done because I think they find that they will work differently when they are uh, measuring it into 32 instead of 40 hours. So I think it's important for organizations to start small, find out how it best works, and then determine if they can expand it. And it still won't work for everyone. Who's your client base? Because that's what we're here to do. Who's our client base? Who are we serving? And how do we best help them? All right, so Jamie, tell us some of the good, some of the things, the positive you've seen, because you only started this in January. So, yep. So I think the positive, well, we're doing an evaluation of the project as we go because we don't want clients to be impacted negatively. Right, so you can't wait for a year down the road and say, right. well, now let's see what happened here. Yeah, you're working four days a week, but the clients aren't getting fully served. Exactly what, what Priscilla was talking yes. about. So, so we're measuring, we're doing surveys with clients as well as surveys with the staff pre and post the pilot to be able to see satisfaction, things that have worked, not worked for them. Um, staff by and large have been really excited to even be a part of this uh, because it's helping with their work-life balance. And I think that's the big payoff for this is I want to produce, 
if I can get a better work-life balance. We did a uh, analysis of the past year of productivity for our staff, and we found that on Fridays, they typically working 50% of any other day. Mm -hmm. um, so we knew that Fridays was not very productive, was probably by you know, noon shutting down, going, I'm kind of done for the day. Um, so this allows them to kind of refresh on a Friday and have a longer weekend, which brings them back more energized to the work they do. Um, I think some of the positives that's come out of this for staff currently is it's also giving them more control of their own schedule um, because they know they have to be more productive. They got to make sure they're filling every time gap. If someone cancels, they can't just sit for an hour and do nothing. They need to figure out how do I fill this um, so they have more control of their schedule. I think the other piece as well is we've reduced the amount of meetings and, and things that they have to do outside of their main job. Mm -hmm. So trainings in the mental health field, you have lots of them, they still require to do those, but more of the weekly meetings might be bi-weekly or once a month, like how do we reduce the time you're doing other things than being productive with the work you do. So I, you said a couple of really interesting things here, Jamie. When you talk about maybe that 50% on Friday, then you can allocate that. You can put that effort into the <clears throat> earlier days mm -hmm. in the week. And Priscilla, we mm -hmm. talk about that elusive work-life balance yes. and this ability of being able to have the time to do some different things. When you talk to organizations and, and you help them figure out culture and work-life balance, how um, instrumental is that in, in a retention tool for employees? That that is huge and so one of the important things for any organization considering this is to involve the employees in the process of figuring out how can we become more productive how can we cut out those meetings that we all know uh, aren't as uh, effective oh, or, or aren't as important. We've all, we've okay? all sat in those meetings. That's we've it. We've all sat in That's those meetings saying, why am I here? <laughs> yes, and so that will motivate people. It's like, wow, if we can get this down to four days a week, that motivates people to be you know, more direct, more uh, effective in what they do, and kind of cut out all the excessive chatter, and let's get it done so we can have our extra day. Okay, yeah. so I think when I've had these conversations, though, with people, people say, well, it's always going to be maybe five people that take advantage of the system that don't get the their work done or their productivity. How, how do you troubleshoot that, Priscilla? So peer pressure, I think, is a good thing mm -hmm. because everybody will want that extra day. And if you really uh, get the team to come together and talk about what does it take to make this work and let's all support one another and let's work as a team to get it done, I think that will address some of those uh, those those folks on the periphery who y y just Says, need to be oh, encouraged. This is now yeah. if I can have yeah. this, then I'm going to take an extra two That's hours it. here, an extra two hours there. I mean, I would think that it also goes to the philosophy, and, and um, Priscilla was talking about work, work culture, Jamie, mm -hmm. of this more is better, and I think that is maybe almost an exclusively a U.S. philosophy <laughs> when it comes when yep. it comes to work that it is okay if you're getting your work done within the mm -hmm. time allotted parking yourself for an extra four hours just to look like you're doing yep. something doesn't automatically equate. <laughs> yep. And, and I think one of the things we've seen in this pilot is the support staff who are not on the pilot are doing all they can to support these staff to make sure that it works because they want this thing to be rolled out in a, in a broader way than we are with our pilot. Um, so it is that camaraderie and that kind of cheering on of we need to make this work so we all can benefit. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's important. You brought up something interesting as well because you said that you have some union workers that you've had to renegotiate a contract in order to even do this pilot. And that is also part of it when we're looking at different kind of working environments. So we entered into an MOU with the union to allow the people to work. Um, you know, guaranteeing that they're getting the same pay, same benefits, same PTO accrual for 80%, 85% of the time, and they have to meet the 100% of the productivity they were expected. So it took some time to negotiate that for them to understand what that really means, that they're not going to be negatively impacted, um, and, and that just took time. Um, I was hoping to have the pilot completed by now, but we're, we're just halfway through, so. And I think part of that process, um, Priscilla, is letting things, letting things play out. But you make an interesting point about time, about how for years we've talked yes. about, uh, you know, hybrid work or remote, but all of a sudden we faced a global pandemic and things changed rapidly. What do you envision seeing in the next two years or so as I think businesses continue to grapple with um, meeting 
the needs of em employees and good employees that they want to retain and changing the way that we work totally. I think that the immediate shift we all made three years ago to remote work will pay great dividends because now we will be much more quick to adapt to this. It won't be for every company, but many will take a look at it. Many more will uh, take that leap and go forward with it, test it, pilot it, figure out what works for their organization, but it will happen a lot faster because we know we can do these things now. Real quick, any advice for employees that would want to bring this up to management and how to even you know broach something like this at their company or at their place of work? That's a great question. I would say that they should think about how do we measure our productivity and then come up with a, at least a uh, overview of a plan and sit down with their leadership team and talk about what are the possibilities. All right, Jamie, we're going to check back in with you and see how things are going, right? Yes. But you would be you would give it a positive mark. So far, yes. We'll check back we'll, in we'll then. We'll find see how out. it yep, goes. Not committing to anything at this point. All right, we'll see. Thank you Great. so much for joining me. I love the conversation. All right, coming up here on Flashpoint, pull out your legislative scorecard. The week that was in Lansing. That's next. Stay with me.